Welcome back to Up and Adams. I'm Brandon Marshall, and I'm taking over this show because Kay was almost late, and there's a penalty for that in football. It's a penalty for that in football. The show starts now! <laughs> <laughs> Building. That's all I need to say. No, Kay's uh, in I the am building. an athlete in the house. I almost was late today. Oh my goodness. I thought you were going coming in on, on Zoom. What are you doing in LA? I would have took care of you. So we came out. We always come to LA, yeah. right, and visit cool people. So we sat down with Reggie Bush and a few others. How while is we're Reggie? wrapping up season three. He's phenomenal. I love him. And he opened up. What do you mean? He opened up. Reggie's chill. Yeah. He's not Hollywood. He just lives in Hollywood like you, so don't get Hollywood on me. I just got But he's Hollywood. like Real chill. Reggie's always been that guy in the locker room. I played with him in, with the Dolphins. To see Reggie like open up was pretty cool. Um, how do you get people to open up on I Am Athlete? Every time somebody comes on, you see a bit of a different side of yeah. them. What's your strategy for that? I think first you slide in the DMs. <laughs> so you're like, yo, Reggie, <laughs> can you come on the show, yeah. right? They respond, because uh, it starts there. You set the tempo in the DM. Like, what kind of energy are you on? Okay. Right? And so when they sit down with us, if I'm being honest, it's, I think there is a, uh, a skill and an art to what you do, mm -hmm. but I, where's this locker room? We're, we're literally just capturing the conversations that we have in the locker room, right? I think people want to sit down with, you know, us, you know, you, me, the Pat McAfee's of the world. Yeah. You know, people want to be more unapologetic and more real. The world. Seriously, I love it. like, nobody want to go into these stuffy studios anymore with people with suits on. They want to sit down with you. It's, I mean, you're, you're not wrong, and you're here, and you are always honest. So you don't have to ever preface anything by saying, if I'm being honest, because you always are. And I want to get into uh, a couple storylines around the league. But first, there is a game tonight. Right. We're kicking off week three, Who's right? Who's playing? <laughs> Brown Steelers, any thoughts? Oh, Brown Steelers. The Steelers wins this game. The Steelers win with yeah, Mitchell win. Trubisky, or are they calling for Pickett mid-game? Well, it's uh, Coach Tomlin. Coach Tomlin, he doesn't get rattled. He's a real leader, right? So any other coach... Maybe there's three coaches in the league that stay true to their game plan, yeah. right? Coach isn't going to listen to the noise. He doesn't care. He's a true leader. He's going to stick with Mitch. That was his guy. You know, maybe, you know, sometime this year we see Kenny. But Coach Tom is going to stick with Mitch. Oh, Why? Think, because he's they, more seasoned. I think they lose this game. Kenny Pickett starting next week. Well, first, they're not going to lose this game. They're not going to lose this there. game. Okay. Well, the other side, the Browns, they had a players-only meeting already. Already? That's not After good. After two week weeks. Two, week two, they had a players-only only meeting? Now, I, I, I kind of know what that means, but talk to me about Have you ever been to one? It means nothing. Okay. It means nothing. You know how many times I called a players-only meeting? No, I want to know. Front, and then all the guys are sitting there like, oh, what does he have to say? Or you had other guys, you know, in the front talking. And it's just like... It goes in one ear and out the other. At the end of the day, just do your job, right? Like, for us to come together and have to push each other to practice and do those things, well, what the hell are you in the NFL for? Yeah. Right? Like, just do your job. So if you're in week two and you're having a players-only meeting, you that's a problem. You've got some leaders there. Like, you got Miles Garrett there. He's, he's really honest about that's being right. frustrated with his team, too. So when he speaks, you'd think it'd go a long way. Okay, so let's say you're the starting defensive back. Yeah. Right? Nowadays, starting defensive backs, you're getting 15, 20, 20 million dollars a year. Yeah. I need to motivate you, Kay? No. Do I need to motivate no, Kay to make it 20 million dollars a year? Marshall has on. Absolutely not. Yeah, right? that's, that's not good. The, that's the problem. What we want is, you know, in those meetings, like, look, guys, we're not executing. We're not doing our job. When we're talking about effort, we're talking about want to, that's a problem. That's a cultural challenge, right? We should only be talking about production. I'm sorry, but this, we're talking about a locker room that has the coach of the year, Kevin mm -hmm. Stefanski. So what does it say about the coach to call a players-only meeting? Well, nothing at all. I mean, you know... If you're you, saying culture is the coach, correct, too, right? Correct, but, but, you know, as a coach in the organization, you do love this stuff, right? The players taking control of the okay, locker good. room. That's when you really have a good team. My thing is we shouldn't, we shouldn't be talking about culture we shouldn't be, be talking about effort right i just want to i just want you to understand like look it's covered three i'm supposed to be in the curl flat right this one i messed up because i took the cheese they ran a five yard route in front of me so i jumped that now they put an in route behind me i was supposed to be there i know this we talked about it all week so i just want to reinforce the x's and o's the execution part of the game i don't want to be talking about i don't want to talk about are you is this is this guy showing up on time Right? I don't want to talk about why isn't he running to the ball, loafing. It's either you got it or you don't. If yeah. you're having those conversations, I, I think you're out of the conversation around 
you know, good team or great team or contenders. So, but Steelers are winning, in your opinion, because of their coach, because oh, of Tomlin. It starts there. It's a trickle-down effect. When he walks into the room, Coach Tomlin is the same person or in the building. He's the same person every single day. Yeah. Right? And he doesn't care who you are. Right? He's going to just hold you accountable and he's going to push you to your greatness. That's the amazing thing about Coach Tomlin. And he doesn't care what's happening. There's always a way. Find a solution. That's what makes him great is just leadership. Let's keep the head coach talk going here on the show because on I Am Athlete, you had a uh, vibrant conversation about Pete Carroll celebrating and saying outwardly that winning over Russell Wilson was rewarding. What did you make of that? And you have to listen to him on I Am Athlete because it right. was incredible. Well, first, uh, I like Coach Pete Carroll. I study Coach Carroll, right? Two guys I study in the NFL when it comes to leadership, totally different styles. Bill Belichick and Coach Pete Carroll. Okay. Bill Belichick, walk in this building, do your job. I don't care about all the other stuff, right? Pete Carroll, raw, raw guy. You want to be there. The energy's at an all-time high every single day. My first time interacting, well, my second time interacting with Coach and free agency, when I left the Miami Dolphins, the, when I left the Denver Broncos to go to Miami Dolphins in 2011, the Seattle Seahawks offered me way more money and they wanted me to come play. This was mm -hmm. Coach Pete Carroll's first off-season free agency, right? And he wanted me to come in. And it was awesome. He took me to a Snoop Dogg concert, so we had this bond that started from back then. Who went to the Snoop Dogg concert? Coach Carol. And I. You and him, just, right. just the two That's of right. you? What no, was no, that it was like? a couple other people around too. It was awesome. So anyways, fast forward to years later, um, Coach Carroll brings me at the, the, the tail end of my career, and we're sitting in this meeting, and, he, and, and we're talking about the Darrell Revises of the world. We're talking about all these amazing corners. Okay. Like, Brandon, it seems like you prepare a little bit different, a little bit more when it comes to these guys. Like, Coach, I do. I have a notebook on Darrell Revis. Like, if I'm playing against Darrell Revis, I may start my prep work three, four weeks out because I got to get ahead because this dude, if, if, if I don't come to play, I won't catch a ball on him. He's like, well, no. You have to approach every single game the same. That's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong mentality. Let me show you what greatness is. Every single day, be the same person. So I'm saying all of that because you're playing against Russell Wilson. Everything you preach and everything you stand on every single day. It wasn't the same. It's like you just totally contradicted yourself. You got a quarterback that led you to a, two Super Bowls, and now there's obviously other people in the organization, mm -hmm. but you got a quarterback that was like this with you. He was a phenomenal leader, not only in the locker room, but also in the community, and now he leaves. He's gone for freaking three months, and this is how you treat him? This is how you act? What about the relationships? And then you got Richard Sherman, and you have other guys that like K.J. Wright, I played with K.J. Wright, mm -hmm. love K.J. Wright, and they go on their podcast, and they talk about their teammate that way. Um, I just, that just didn't sit well with me. Those are some of those things I think you, it stays in house. They know their challenges. They know their problems. Some things just stay in the locker room, and I think that was one of them. What, why do you think Richard Sherman has such an issue with Russell Wilson? Well, I don't think it's just Richard Sherman. I think it, it, it's always been defense versus offense, right? We're talking about, you know, that legion of boom. Yeah. It's top five defenses of all time. And you know? is it that they didn't get credit for what they did or that Pete Carroll didn't help them as much as he could? Well, first off, when it comes to the quarterback position, every quarterback is coddled, right? Every quarterback gets special privileges. <laughs> <You're saying. laughs> it is, you know, like right. we know this, right? It's special privileges. So when you look at what Richard Sherman is saying, it's basically like we're coming out here, we're busting our butts, and then when we get in these meetings, you may call us out. But then in turn, you know, Russell may throw a pick and you may not say something to him. So it was always this back and forth between Russ and defense. Um, but at the end of the day... But together they won a Super Bowl. They won a Super Bowl, right? Can we celebrate that? Uh, declare victory. Right. They won a Super Bowl. Right. But everyone has their... It, it, he's such a polarizing character. But I see what you're saying. Like, you know, you should... Pete Carroll's philosophy as a coach is play every game the same way, even when you're in the Super Bowl. That's right. Even when you're deciding whether or not to put the ball in Marshawn Lynch's hand, keep it like this. Mm -hmm. And I think Bill Belichick sort of feels the same way. It's every game, That's every right. all four quarters are the same, but this one meant a little more to him. You had stability and in your the organization. the publicness of it's ugly. Yeah, but you had, you had stability in your organization for 10 years. Yeah. That's something to celebrate. You had a guy, That's didn't true. get in any trouble. You had a guy that was just, he echoed what you were saying in your team meetings in a locker room all over the place, yeah. all over the, the dang on city. Yeah. 
right? Come on. But you can say and what you want now, and so can Richard Sherman because he's no longer in that locker room. So that's you're right. saying that's a sacred space. It should be in-house. Until you're not in-house anymore, and then you can sort of talk about it. Well, my thing is this, right? If you go back and listen to what Coach Pete Carroll said, he was like, you guys figure it out. You know why this was special. And then, and then you have guys out there ex-players coming out saying, oh, yeah, coach was hot. Coach was saying all these other things. Yeah. We, we never seen Coach Carroll like this. So what are you saying, Coach? Why don't you come out and say what, you're, what you said? Because you started this conversation. How do you really feel? Tell us. Right. Right? I just don't like that. Coach Carroll's a phenomenal leader. He's done a phenomenal job his entire career. Russell is a phenomenal leader, phenomenal quarterback. You guys did something special together. Keep that stuff in-house. And then there's the gifts flying around and the memes and all the, like, Doug Baldwin's getting involved in all of that. Really? I mean, there's a lot. I, I didn't think see we, that. I don't know. It might be completely unrelated. Messy? But people are connecting some of those uh, some of those things to each other. But I think you're right to celebra de cele celebrate, declare victory. You know what, I'll, this is the last what? thing I'll say on yeah. this. Okay, I played 13 years in the National Football League. I had 17 different quarterbacks. When I got to the Seattle Seahawks and I walked in a building and there was, you know, I, you know, you feel some of that, right? I'm like, you know, you're the alternative? You want to play with the guys I played with? This is Russell Wilson. We're talking about the most winningest Jay quarterback Cutler out here through catching strays. <laughs> no, I love Jay. Thank you, Jay. Jay tar 180 targets a year. I can't complain against I our know. guy Jay Cutler. Smoking Jay, kidding. I love you. I'm just kidding. Jay. I love you. Come sit with us. And, you know, I don't know. He'll come out. LA tell me, tell me this. We'll move on a little bit. What, if you could pick a locker room to be in, culture-wise, get in the rock a lot-wise, right now, if you could play in one of them, which one would you pick? Oh man, I would the Buffalo Bills. They seem like they have a, they have fun. I, I play. I love playing with those type of uh, quarterbacks, right? Like they're on schedule, but they also know how to make a play where it's like, hey, this play is broken down. Let's go. Love Josh Allen. What makes him special? Um, his relatability, right? Oh. His relatability, talent-wise, he has all the all the all the traits, right? Big arm. He's physical. High IQ. He's coachable. He's great there, right? He separates himself from a lot of guys in the world when it comes to that. But a lot of those guys, right? Like, you look at Aaron Rodgers, right? Like, it took a lot of work for Aaron Rodgers to be sort of relatable, right? Like, you understand, yeah. like, some guys, we had, remember Brett Favre? Brett Favre, when he played with the Jets, he had his own office. He didn't even get dressed in the locker room. You, sometimes you see wow. these quarterbacks, they walk in the building, it's like, oh, that's our quarterback, right? Some of these guys, the Eli Mannings of the world, the, the Russell Wilsons of the world, you know, the Josh Allens of the world, it's like, they, you're just a guy. You're just cool. He's sitting in the locker room. He may be playing ping pong with you. Right. You know? Some of these guys like, I gotta go watch third down and short. 70% of the time, they're going zero. Yeah. I gotta go in the office. Like, no, bro, like, sit here and talk with the guy. You guys. can tell that with him and Stephon Diggs, right. that he's very, he's disarmed. He's, he's one of the guys. And that's important. That's right. Relatability matters when you have, especially when you have, I mean, I just like how chill he's being with all this pressure. You brought up. So much pressure. You brought up the, you know, our podcast, right? And how we get those convers, you know, how do we get those guys to open up that way? That's Josh Allen. Those conversations that we have on our show, Josh Allen will sit there for an hour yeah. and, 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 and fit in. Some of those quarterbacks will come in and be like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And they'll walk away, right? Because they're just on a different level. So that's what makes Josh Allen special. You mentioned Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you're talking about things being in-house. Did you see what he said about Amari Rodgers last week? This whole thing about how he's not, you know, where was he? How, he was asked how he's fit in the offense. and. Right. He didn't, I don't think he wanted to lie. He's an honest person who's done you know, a lot of work on himself to be open and vulnerable, and he's like, he's you know, not involved, and that's all I have to say on that. Is yeah. that, like, like, how do you handle that if you're a player, Mari Rogers? Is it being, being put in the public too much, the fact that clearly there's something there? Yeah, no, I think, um, again, the quarterbacks are special. Like, yeah. you know, you play with some of these quarterbacks, a Peyton Manning or a Tom Brady walks in, it's like, it's almost like you're seeing a guy, like, oh, my goodness. So... As a younger wide receiver or younger player, when your quarterback says something like that, or it's almost as if, like, your dad is talking to you, right? Huh. So you just, like, he's right. right. He's always right. right. I just have to figure this thing out. Yeah. You take onus. You take the responsibility and try to find a way to get into the off offense. Sometimes the, those uh, public conversations push guys to their great, greatest potential. And you have to know that as the leader, and he's been a leader long enough that he and, gets it. And he has to know... 
if I say this publicly about this teammate, well, this t can this teammate handle it? Will he break? Some guys will break down. Yeah. Some guys, it will actually actually push them to greatness. That pushed me to greatness. Hearing Jay Cutler saying, if Brandon Marshall doesn't get it right, you know, we're going to have to move on. You got to get Jay Cutler on I Am Athlete. We've been talking, but ah! Jay, come on. I would love that. Come on up in Adams. I try, oh, I to, try to get Jay. Jay's very, Jay's like chasing a, a, a girl, like a, a guy or girl like on, on Instagram Jay's, doesn't want to Jay's commit. weird, let's just say it. He's weird. Jay, Jay you're, you're weird, weird, but we love Jay, you. We, lo we love you. We love you. Uh, you know, wide receivers aren't so bad. We talked a lot of quarterbacks. We're, we're, well, maybe we'll bring you back at the beginning of next segment. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wanted to ask you a couple things here. Are your boy Justin Jefferson? Yeah. Best wide receiver, Darius Slate took care of him. Now, you in the rare time that you had a bad game or a poor game uh, that wasn't, you, you know, your expectation, how did you talk your way out of that? Like, yeah. how, you know, what would you say to Justin Jefferson after that game? Nothing, right? Because, like, you know, sometimes we see some of these guys, whether it's Justin Jefferson or DK Metcalf or Tyree Kill, we put them on this pedestal and it's like, oh, my goodness, they are the best in the world and they dominate every single matchup. That is not true. Those guys got to this point because they learned how to fail forward, fall forward, yeah. right? They learned that. You think Justin Jefferson never had a bad practice or never had a bad game or I'm never sure had a DB get to him? And then also as a wide receiver, if I'm being honest, you know, we're going to watch film and be like, well, and these are the things that a lot of, you know, casual fans may not see or understand, even people around the league because they're not watching the game, they're not watching all 70 snaps. It's like, well, Slay actually had help on this one. Or Slay was able to play off and play the deep ball because he had this linebacker that was going to take anything, you know, uh, short or intermediate, right? right? So there's a lot of times these star wide receivers, they're not playing against one person. They're playing against two or three. They're playing against a scheme. They like tried you, doing that again, you know, but it didn't work week one. Yeah. I thought, I, I was surprised Darius locked him up. I just, I was, and I, and I apologized to Darius, and like, I'm glad he's celebrating all week for that. Yeah, well, you know, you have that, and then also you have the quarterbacks as well. Like, mm -hmm. there's so much more that goes into it. Sometimes it's the quarterback, sometimes it may be the play caller. The play caller could be off. Yeah. I don't think Justin, Justin Jefferson is losing any sleep. I think what, it, what happens is you actually... This is why he's great, because what he'll do is use this for fuel and dominate the next four or five games. Uh, Mike Evans, one game suspension, fair? I, yes, because, and Mike is going to kill me. Oh, boy. Ooh. It's like, like, they've been doing this for how many years? Yeah. Right? I'm sorry, Mike, but I, when I saw this, like, it's not a big deal. But I was like, oh, I can see why the NFL may suspend him. Because it's like, all right, bro, like, you guys fight every single year. Y'all play twice a year. Like, we're tired of seeing this. So I think it's more of the NFL making a statement saying, y'all get y'all stuff together. Y'all can duke it out in between the whistle. But all the extra stuff, y'all need to stop that. Um, I mean, Fitzpatrick was your guy. You, uh, you Ryan. That's your guy. Ryan, yeah. Oh so if somebody goodness. came Biggest at Ryan, if somebody came at Ryan, like, what happened with Brady out there, what would you do? I... I Listen, see, people always like B. Marsh, man, he was out there, he's so aggressive, he's so like. I didn't say that, intense. I'm just asking you. I know, but people would think, what would you do? People always like, man, you know, Brandon, well, how would he react? It's like, I never got a personal foul uh, uh, penalty. Well, I got one. You know, I never, I always played within the rules because I was playing the long game. Like, I wanted to finish the game. I would have, I would have tried to step in and separate it. I wouldn't have fought, but if he had put, if they put their hands on Fitzy, yeah. He didn't put his hands on Fitzy. If he puts his hands on Fitzy, okay. Oh, I'm jumping in. You're there. jumping in there. Me and uh, Eric Decker held out for Fitzpatrick. It was a legendary, one of the most legendary holdouts. What happened? Talk to me. They wouldn't pay. The Jets wouldn't pay Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah. After that magical year that we had, and Eric Decker and I, Coach Bowles is our head coach. We said we're not coming back, Coach Bowles, <gasps> until you pay him. So if Ryan holds out, we're going to hold out as well. What is it, it was about a legendary Fitzpatrick? Holdout. And we'll, of course, see him on Amazon tonight ahead of the Steelers and the Browns. But He's you're saying, is it man. the relatability? That's the, the, that's the thing? It's the beard. Is Jimmy G Who a relatable like a quarterback? Beard? Jimmy G. Jimmy G? Is he, he, is. Is he in that category? Is that why people rally around him, those players yeah. at locker room? You saw it, right? Yeah. You know, I did. as soon as he got in, I, I don't know if it was after his first touchdown or whatnot, how the guys rallied around him. Maybe it was after the game. And you saw Trent, you saw 
all the guys just bouncing and pushing him yeah. and loving on him. It's because he's one of the guys. He's relatable. I talked to DeForest Buckner. We'll have that interview tomorrow. He, of oh, course, wow. you, 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 he was on the team that went to the yeah. Super Bowl. And Jimmy, he says he has a switch, and he just turns it, and he becomes this leader mm -hmm. and this sort of general out there. And I'd never heard that about Jimmy G. Uh, Brandon, thank you for being here. This is awesome. Do you want to stay after the break for a second, maybe? If you I want don't me know. to. Look I at this set. To look at this. <laughs> the whole time. Uh, but we will be back after this. I think Charlie Batch is joining us, and we've got lots to get to because this game is tonight.